Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the college football big game preview show. And we're going to make picks and we're going to do all the wonderful things with it, of course. Ah, you can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you have not listened before and you are just now starting, hit that subscribe button on whatever you're listening on, whether it's YouTube or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Hit subscribe, leave a nice review, leave some comments, share the show out with your buddies if you enjoy it. We appreciate the support, of course. The show, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com, or if you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Just click on that. It'll take you right where you need to go. It'll give you everything you need to know about sports gambling down in beautiful Delta, Mississippi. You ready to jump into this? Yes, sir. How's your day been? Uh, that's a different situation. It's been good. It's been long, and uh, a lot of big, big things happening at work. Yeah, I can understand big things. that. Big isn't always good, but... And if, if you're like me, in your free time, you've been trying to figure out college football lines, trying to understand... I hate this week. ...what has gone on with this season so far. Yeah. And I, I can't figure it out. I mean, I mean I've lost the first two weeks, and I'm fine with losing. At least I have plays that I enjoy, that I love. I look at these games, and I feel like I know something before kickoff. Here, no idea. I mean, there's 48 games this week. No clue, right? No, no idea. And there's like six of them that are worth watching. Yeah. So let's talk about some that are actually worth watching. All right. Game number one, Iowa as a two-point favorite on the road at Iowa State, the total is 44 and a half. 3 p.m. is the kickoff time. FS1 is the TV channel. It's at Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa. It is the first time that college game day has ever been to Ames, Iowa. So that, in and of itself, makes it a pretty big deal, right? I agree. Uh, obviously, El Asico, you got to love it. That is the, uh, the name given to it by, I believe, the shutdown full cast. I may be wrong about that, but... It's kind of taken on a life of its own. Iowa State had a bye after a lackluster win, 29-26 to in week one. Uh, double overtime against Northern Iowa. Quarterback Brock Purdy looked meh after a big-time season last year. Uh, Iowa has won three straight in Ames, five of the last six overall in the series. The metrics have got Iowa minus 3.45 and the total at 52.5, which is way over... The actual Vegas line. I was just about to say that's a that's a big difference, man. Yes. Uh, tell me what you think about these teams. Uh, Matt Campbell, you know, obviously wanting to do big things at Iowa State this year. Everybody has them as a dark horse, uh, Big Twelve, you know, championship contender. They did not look it in Week One. Was that just Iowa teams doing Iowa things, or was that a real problem? This is one of those games where I really. I really have no idea what we're going to expect. Hey, we've only got one sample size, one game to have watched Iowa State. They didn't look great. I, I do think that um, North uh, – oh, my gosh. Northern Iowa? Uh, yes. I, man, that was, that, was, <laughs> that was bad. Northern Iowa – we're all in the state of Iowa here. I can't remember that. Yes. Northern Iowa, I, I think, is, is better than, yeah, they're, than a they're lot a, of people. Like, I mean, they – They're a good FCS team. Yes, they – they're not on the same level as most, but Iowa State is just now getting into that world of kind of being one of the big boys. Now, it, I will say this. Iowa State, at the end of last season, also played another FCS team right down to the wire. They struggled with them, too. Um, yeah. But, I mean, then they had a, a fantastic bowl showing against Washington State. They lost the game, but... I'm trying to not read too much into Week 1. I really wish we could have gotten a Week 2. I, I hate that they get the bye week. I, I really don't like bye weeks in week two. I know we've got two bye weeks now, every every college team does. Well, I think they would have enjoyed having a bye week. Like, or not a, I, I think they would have enjoyed playing somebody. 
to get a little more of the rust off That's right. before this Iowa game. Iowa, of course, has played basically two nobodies. They played Miami, Ohio, and, and somebody else. But it's, be- um, it's better than sitting at home, playing yourself. Yes. Because that's what they've been doing. It's just scrimmaging, practicing, and, and they've done that all summer. Yes. And then they, they get to play a game. They don't look great, and then they go back to hitting themselves. Yeah. And and, and I, if I had to lean, I'd go with Iowa. Nate Stanley, quarterback for Iowa, senior, looks good. They lost TJ Hawkinson. They lost uh, Noah Fant. They lost some dudes. That's right. And it looks like they have not missed a beat. This yeah. offensive line looks really good. The defense is just as efficient as ever. And uh, it's just it. Th- Kurt Ferentz, a good team. really good coach. Yeah. Been Imagine. doing it for 20-something years at Iowa. That's, I, think, I think this is year 20, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is if, – If it's not – I mean, he's at least twenty, so it's either twenty or, or more. I, th- I think it's I think it's twenty this year. I think it's twenty this year. I'm pretty sure about that. But yeah, I'm I'm pumped about it. Like this is always a fun matchup. Oh, no, I'm going to watch stuff. this game. Yeah. this is going to be the game my TV is going to be on when it's on. Um, this is this is must watch viewing for me. It's become that um, the last several years that Iowa State has has kind of. Matt Cam- since Matt Campbell has taken over the program, yeah. and, and and kind of rebuilt some things there. And uh, I just want to see a good game. I want to see Iowa State play better because I thought they had a chance to compete in the Big 12. Yeah. Like, like when I say compete, I mean to compete possibly for the win. Big 12 championship game. Yeah, possibly and, win the Big 12. And, and, and just make it to the game or be in the conversation of playing in that game. If the way they look against Northern Iowa, if they yeah. don't put on a display here, I know those are non-conference games so they can lose both of them and still compete, but it's just about how you going into – league play yeah it's I, I part of me wonders if maybe they just it, they don't have they don't have the full roster of dudes right I, I think maybe that has something to do with it you think you think that matt campbell is just developing a program that is set up to win in the big 12 because they play such a different style of ball than most of the rest of the country well most than than the rest of the conference right what well, i'm like the big they, 12 is Quite a bit different than the rest of the the Power Five con- yeah. conferences. <clears throat> no, and you're right. So, you're right. And so is he saying, "I don't care about non-conference games. I just need to win the Big Twelve. I'm going to build a system that I think competes against this the style Big of football." And then and then against everybody else. We talked about that with Texas. Obviously, Texas is doing that. Yeah. But to, I mean, Herman is is. He's really setting up to just be a. That's why he struggled with Maryland the first couple of years. Um, this said another. I mean, they look good now, and they look like they're better than just trying to compete with the Big Twelve. But he's he's building that program a little differently than everybody else. And that might be what's going on here. Uh, I I will. You know what? I'll know more after this weekend. I don't know that we will like, though. I mean, if they if they get beat up by Iowa and they still do really well in the Big Twelve, then. I mean, we they, didn't, they we lost, didn't learn anything. They lost at Iowa last week. Last year, uh, yeah. I mean, last last year, thirteen to three. Yes, and which it is a was, Big Ten football game. Yes, they it went was into Iowa nasty. and they played Big Ten football, and it, it was it was fun to watch. Well, I mean, I mean was, but you and I like that stuff. Like, yeah, you and I enjoy it. We're but, defensive guys, but yeah, it's I, I'm I'm curious if this is setting up to be another one. Of the, I think that's why this line has or this total has gone down. Well, the to- um, the total's gone down because 96% of the bets got it on Vegas Insider right now are on the over. Yeah, it's uh, well no, that's that's on the under. Oh. No, yeah, that's shoot, 96 that on the, the under. It is so, the under. It's, so it moved right. from 47 all the way down to 44 and a half. Where are we at? And 47 yeah, that, 44. And, yeah, okay, that, flip. I mean that makes sense. That makes sense. I hate so they move it from one line to the other. Yeah, I I do agree. Y'all can't see this, but uh, but it's you can go check it out for yourself at VegasInsider.com if you want to. Um, yeah, I, let's let's make some picks here. Uh, I'm going to take Iowa. I'm going to take Iowa. Yeah, I, I like I like. Kirk I'm rarely going to bet against my boy Kevin Bell. Yeah, I could see that. He beat up on me in high school, but it made me a better person. So I'm assuming that you're going to take Iowa with the spread as well. Yeah, I would take Iowa. And I, I mean, it's, it's I mean, only two. With the, when it's this small, I'm going to usually always bet the, the team that I think will win the game. Uh, tell me this. So game day was kind of set up to go to Syracuse yep. this week. Do you think that because this is a FS1 game? Okay. Do you think that had Stanford beaten USC that they would have gone to UCF? I hope not. I hope not. Well, so I I think, and this is this is a completely different conversation. I think the guys on game day 
have a bigger responsibility than to ABC and the ESPN because their influence actually matters in this sport. The yeah. people that watch this thing to determine um, the championship, the tournament, the playoff teams, all this stuff, they listen to them. Nebraska, and this is not his fault, okay? Nebraska had an overwhelmingly misplaced odds to win the national championship because in a one quick line as he was about to sign off of a show, he was, uh, um, Kirby was asked about what about Nebraska next year? And he said, if Tom Herman can do this and do that, Scott, Frost. Herman, Scott Frost can do that. <laughs> I was thinking of Herman. If he can do this and he can do that and, and everything falls right, they can compete for a national championship. And that's all he said. And instantly, all the odds went their way. I think these guys have a responsibility yeah. to do what's best for the sport and not what's necessarily best for their company in we'll go to ABC games or we'll go to ESPN games. And the reason that matters is because that is the number one TV show in the world when it comes to sports. There's yeah. no there's no sports show that gets a higher rating. You could go to any place in the world. That game could get a zero rating. That show, that show is going to dominate TV. Yeah, it's it's going to do at least 1.8 million so ESPN every episode. And, and, yes, ESPN and ABC are going to make their money off that show. I, regardless. I'm really glad that they they kind of didn't didn't pick an ESPN or an ABC team because this is the best game of the weekend. Yeah, I think, I think this is the most the I, most impactful game of the week. I think they're getting to a point where they're they're wanting to hit all of the places that they have not gotten a chance to. And, and when you have not an that opportunity, many. yeah. Now yeah. Syracuse would have given them that chance. Yeah. Had and they won. we're talking about power fives, of course. That's but, oh yeah. Yeah. They can't go all around the world. So, but that's like just I, that's just my opinion. I think they owe it to the sport because they actually affect lines. They have. I mean. There's a they, lot of big. There's a lot of big betters that think I move lines. I move lines, and they get all egotistical about it. No, you want to know who moves lines? Kirby. Kirby moves yeah, Kirk, lines. Kirk Kirk Street definitely definitely moves lines. All right, let's move into game number two. Stanford at UCF. Central Florida is a seven and a half point favorite here. Total is fifty nine. It's at two thirty p.m. on ESPN. So these will be going head to head here. Uh, Spectrum Stadium in Orlando, Florida. It's going to be hot. It's going to be muggy. It's going to be the humidity out the wahoo. Quarterbacks KJ Costello and Brandon Wimbush are back. UCF was hoping to get a ranked Stanford team coming in, right. uh, just to give them a little more credence to, to to have something on the resume. Right? Yeah, if they continue to win, they want to be able to put this on the resume. Now, people look at this as, well, this is. An easy bet. This it was UCF minus three, I believe, as a game of the year earlier, and it's ballooned all the way up to seven because of how badly Stanford got beat last week. It's now seven and a half. It's now seven and a half. KJ Costello back, Brandon Wimbush back. UCF has not been super efficient with either one of these quarterbacks in the passing game. That is Stanford's number one weakness. Stanford has been able to stop the run. They have been able to stop the things that UCF is good at. So. The question is, now the metrics have it, UCF minus 11.18. The total is 57 on it. So the total has it under and has UCF covering the spread. I, I like Josh Heupel. I want to say I trust David Shaw more, but, man, I still don't know what is going on with Stanford. Stanford just doesn't look good. They don't look right, and, and I'm going to tell you, they got to play two games on the West Coast where they're used to that climate and they're used to that atmosphere. I know that L.A. last week – was hot and muggy, but it was real late at night. So it's, it was probably it's different. Down. It ain't, it ain't like, two thirty in Orlando. It ain't like the heat down south. Yeah, and we talk about that a lot, and sometimes it matters, and sometimes it doesn't. Boise, Boise went to Tallahassee and, and whooped them. I, okay, I think but, I think UCF is a little bit better team than Florida State right now. Oh, there's no question. <laughs> I, I also think that I don't know that I don't know that Boise is not a better team than Stanford. You might be right. So, with with that being said. I really want it. When I woke up and I was looking at lines, I didn't care if 100% of the people were on Central Florida. All I wanted to see was this line at six and a half. And it was going to be a lock bet of my, I needed a touchdown to win. 
when I saw it, it was seven and a half, I was like, oh, man, it just scares me. And then I see that 88% of the people on Central Florida are thinking, we're making a pick here. I'm riding with Central Florida. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm going to roll Stanford to cover the spread. I'm going to take UCF to win the game. I think I think they win, you know, field goal, touchdown, something like that. Um, but, man, that, that hook just... It scared me. Yeah. It was something I didn't like. And... and I just don't know what I think about this Stanford team. I don't know how I don't know how real they are. Yeah, neither do I. And I think this environment's going to be tough. I think Central uh, Central Florida doesn't care that they're not ranked. Those fans are going to show up. They're going to they're going to get after them. Yeah, no, I can I can see that. Uh, I, I mean, you know, there are can, hundreds of Stanford fans in the Stanford crowd. Oh yeah, there, there will be zeros of Stanford fans. Yeah, in this no, crowd. there will be ten, tens. Tens. And the reason Maybe. I say that is because like. Stanford people are transplants everywhere. Yeah, but especially I like I Orlando, oh, big Florida, city. Florida, that's right. Florida has that's, people from all over the world. That's what I'm the saying. The problem is, is those people aren't showing up for this game. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, you might, you might be right. All right, let's move on. Game three. Clemson minus twenty-seven and a half at Syracuse. Now, Chris told me that this is not a big game. It's not a big game. The total sixty-one. It's six thirty p.m. ABC in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Uh, it may not be a big game, but it is a matchup that was supposed to matter and was supposed to be a big game. That's right. And look, and Syri- and Syracuse Dino Babers ripped out our hearts. Clemson has been given fits by Syracuse the last two seasons. And, and now, last year they didn't Syracuse, give up forty to Maryland, though. Syracuse should have or sixty to Maryland. But, so here's the thing: they got demolished last week, sixty-three to twenty, but. Was that a little bit of a look-ahead spot? Were they so geared up for Because, look, here's the deal. Syracuse finds a way to beat Clemson, who has not looked super efficient on offense. True. Trevor Lawrence has not looked fantastic. True. He hadn't looked like what he did last year if at the Maryland end of the year. Maryland looks better than Clemson against this football team, then everything we know about this sport is wrong. Well, it, that might be the case anyway. Because everything has been bananas in the first two weeks anyway. I can't Look, live in that world. The Clemson offense, Texas A&M showed how to slow down Travis Etienne. I would right? love to see it. Now, don't forget, Syracuse went on the road to Maryland. Now Clemson actually has to go on the road to Syracuse. On the road to Maryland. What do you think that drive is? Uh, I, I'm with you. Like two uh, and a half hours? Yeah, Maybe. But either way, you're playing at the opposing team stadium. It's just, it's a little bit That's different. That's upstate New York. It could be a, it could be a hike. I could, I could be wrong. So, but from Clemson to Syracuse is a little ways. Well, yes. That's a plane flight. But look at this. The last time Clemson lost a regular season game was in this stadium two years ago. I know. I remember. With a much worse Syracuse team than what they've got right now. Now, I do think that Clemson is better now than they were two years ago. But so is Syracuse. Like, there is a chance. Now, the metrics have this Clemson minus 25.27 with a total of 64.8. So they've got it going over, and they've got Syracuse covering, which I can 100% see Syracuse covering. Because all Syracuse has to do, if they win this game, they are the front runners in that division in the ACC. So if that's, Syracuse wins the game, it's they not so out much, of the realm of possibility. There's so much more than the front runners of winning the ACC. There's so much more than that if they beat Clemson. Well, they would have been had they not gotten their doors blown in by Maryland. Like I you would if Syracuse wins this game, they would have to lose two more times in the ACC. And if they beat Clemson, do you see them losing two more times? I mean, we looked at that schedule. Well, no. But I also don't see them beating Clemson. Neither do I, but we didn't the last 2 years either. Like that's that's what I'm saying. I think Dino Babers knows something about Clemson, where he is able to find matchup advantages. And no, Syracuse has not looked good this year so far. But I just part of me thinks that they might be saving something. I hope for right. Clemson. You know how much I love Dino Babers, and they, you know they completely underestimated Maryland last yeah. week. I think you, that might you, be what yeah, happened. So or what happened? You you know how much I love this team. And, yeah. And you know how much I dislike the other team. And I just. I can't see it. I can't see it. If you've been sandbagging so much, <laughs> waiting for this game, yeah, I don't know. I can't see it. I hope it happens. I'd love to be wrong on this. I just don't understand 25-point spreads being, what a, being a big game. Because 
I if wish we knew that one money thing line. <laughs> that has super small, I can get you the money line in like two seconds. If this if this thing happens, that is such a small percentage chance of actually occurring, then it's a big deal. But you could say that with every team where some little guy plays a big guy. Your money line is plus twenty five hundred. Oh, and the line is now twenty eight. See, I might hit Syracuse now. I might bet that now. I mean, let's see here. I'm gonna swap it on the sheet right quick. But it, it, I'm gonna go buy some Powerball tickets. Does it? No, no, no. I, I, I'm not talking about the it, now money line. I mean, you know, what do you put five bucks down? What's five bucks pay out at twenty five hundred? I mean, you're talking if, if it was plus a thousand, that's five hundred. So make it a thousand. You make one hundred twenty five dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. That's like buying a lottery ticket. That's what it is. Buy, buy one of them jumbo bucks, whatever. It is, it is a lottery ticket. That's exactly what it is. But but Syracuse plus 28, like, that sounds reasonable right my, here. You're right. And, it, so, and I'm not arguing with the bet, and I'm not arguing with any of that. My argument is we can't have lottery tickets be what the big game is. Agreed. Agreed. I'm with you. But we'll see how this game plays. Y'all, y'all are seeing this fight. See, the kids are watching it's, this fight. It's all good. It happens. That's it. I, I was going to put this on here. I'm taking Syracuse plus 28, Clemson to win. You doing the same thing? Uh, yeah, I'll take the 28 points. That's, I knew you'd take them points. That's, would you have taken it at 27 and a half? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it, what would you have gone down to? I don't know. I like Dino Babers, and I don't care if I lose. I've got a job. <laughs> I've got a really good job. That's so a good I don't point. Give a shit. That's a good point. All right, game number four. We'll roll through these so we can do the uh, the interesting matchups. Give a little blurb about each. Arizona State at Michigan State. Michigan State minus thirteen and a half. Total is forty two. That's a low freaking total. It opened at forty seven, by the way. Uh, Three p.m. Lo- I would have loved it at forty seven. Holy crap! I'd have loved it at forty seven. Oh, same here. I, and apparently everybody else did too. Uh, at 3 p.m. on Fox, so check this out. In that one window, you've got Iowa, Iowa State on FS1 at 3. You got Stanford, UCF at 2:30 on ESPN, and you got Arizona State, Michigan State at 3 p.m. on Fox. How crazy is that? They just tossed everything right in the same window. Uh, this is at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. Arizona State freshman quarterback Jaden McDaniel has been awesome through his first two games, but they have played absolutely nobody. Uh, look, Michigan State offense. Their offense had trouble moving the ball against Tulsa. Now, they remedied that last week against Western Michigan, but Western Michigan has had a defense in the hundreds for the last three, four years. I mean, they are terrible. We think Arizona's defense. Arizona State's defense is ranked. Arizona State's defense, this is defensive efficiency. Arizona State is number seven in the country. No way. Michigan. Oh, well, okay. Michigan, well, we're using numbers against high school teams. Michigan State is number twelve. Now, Michigan yeah. State has also played. They played Tulsa Michigan and Western Michigan. Michigan. Farm. I got it. Yeah. So it, look. Now the other side of this is Arizona State did play Kent State, and not that Kent State is supposed to be any good, but remember they have moved to a more high tempo, uh, up tempo, whatever offense. I mean they they can put up points, uh, and Arizona State held them to nothing. I mean, they they shut them down. Herm Edwards went seven and five in the regular season last year. Four losses by seven points each, and another one by two. Yeah, we like Herm. I like Coach Herm. Yes, the metrics have at Michigan State minus fifteen point two seven and a total of forty three point nine five. So they've got it going over, and they've got Michigan State covering the thirteen and a half. I don't see it that way. This is going to be in my gambling picks, uh, but I am taking Arizona State plus the thirteen and a half. And actually, I think that line's moved to 14. I can give you an update on line right now. Like, I, I want to say that it had moved to 14, but. I got 13 and a half. Okay, it moved back down. So, Arizona State plus 13 and a half for me. Uh, I'll still take Michigan State to win at home, but this, this has field goal, touchdown game written all over it. You agree? These, these are two coaches that like yep. to, to limit possessions I'm, I'm, I, and not take chances. I don't normally like agreeing with you just because I think it's boring to watch, but. Michigan State to win, Arizona State to cover. You know, we had somebody uh, somebody on YouTube commented and said, this is bull crap. I came here to get betting advice, and you guys are giving valid points for both teams. Like, and I said, 
But we're going to disagree sometimes. Well, well, Gary's usually going to get valid points. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you things that piss me off about the other team. There you and go. So I like to bet against them. Yeah, it, it kind of irritated me. I was like, yeah, sometimes we're going to disagree. That's what happens. Uh, let's move into game number five. North Carolina at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is a three-point favorite. This is a Friday night game on ESPN, and it starts at 5 p.m. Central Time, God's time zone. 67 and a half so is the total. BB and T field in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Look. Honest, honest question. Honest question. What would you have given me if I told you before the season started? North Carolina, Wake Forest, big game, week three. What would I have given you? Like, like what were the odds on that? Plus 1,500. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I it, mean it would have been way up there. No chance. It would have no been way chance. up there. Uh, but Black Brown things, make us all look like fools. Yes, uh, very much so. It really, like, Wake Forest should have lost their week one game. Yes, sir. But they, they found a way have. to come back. Found a way to come back. North Carolina should have lost week one. Should have lost last week. Found a way to come back. Did what they had to do. Uh, look, Clemson, Hawaii, and North Carolina are the only three teams in the country that have two Power Five wins through the first two weeks this year. Now, the interesting thing about this game, it is a non-conference game. And you and I argued about this before. This is the dumbest thing on the planet. It does not affect the ACC standings whatsoever. These two teams are traditional rivals. They wanted to play more frequently than the once every six years that the ACC was letting them do it. Then play every year. So that, well, that's what they're trying to do. Alabama and Tennessee, traditional rivals. They play every year. LSU, Florida, traditional rivals. They play every year. But the, the reason they do that is because the SEC actually put that into the scheduling. So it's, but the ACC said, you know no, why? we're just going to rotate. You know why? Because it matters more. You about right. You about right. Uh, quarterback Sam Howell against Jamie Newman. That is a quarterback matchup that I never would have thought was going to be a highlight reel, right? Well, big game uh, Tuesday. If North Carolina wins oh, here, Wednesday. they have App State coming to Chapel Hill next week. Both will be undefeated. Game that day a, will be there. No, not at that one. Oh. We talked about this the other day. If North Carolina can get through these two games, that's right. Clemson comes into Chapel Hill the week after that in that's week right. five. That's right. You look at that schedule, there ain't nothing else. But Clemson's going to lose to Syracuse. It's entirely possible. You never know. We all understand how the rankings work. Everybody will call that a fluke, and then they'll move Clemson to number four. You know, uh, they won the national championship last year. Hey, give them a freebie. It's all good. No worries. Doesn't matter that their schedule is complete and total garbage. That's fine. Metrics have Wake Forest minus 3.22, the total 65. So they've got it going under. Who would have thought? And that's, they've got weight covering. Almost exactly what the lines are. Yeah, I know, right? Now, some of these are, are way off. And, yeah, but this, this one's not. This one, dead on. Dead on the number. Uh, give me your pick. What you thinking here? I'm not betting against Mac Brown anymore. <laughs> Listen. North Carolina to win? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. give me North Carolina to win. They're going to feed it. They're, gonna, they're not going to lose a game. That's No, I'm out on that one. But You think Wade Ford's going to win? No, I think North Carolina's probably going to win. I, I, like, I like North Carolina's team. I have, I have no idea what Mac Brown did, but... Now look, it, Sam Howell has got, I mean, some nuts on him. <laughs> he is he is something else. Uh, good gracious. Now let's move into the interesting matchups here. Very quick blurb about each. Friday night game, you love this one. Washington State minus nine at Houston. It's not on Houston's campus. It's at NRG Stadium. Pretty big matchup. Not even going to talk about the game. We got yeah. Derek King against uh, this new kid for for Mike Leach. And Mike right. Leach could turn anybody into quarterback gold. No like question. it's just ridiculous. Uh, but Dana Holgerson played for Mike Leach at Iowa Wesleyan. Mike Leach yeah. is so old. Leach gave him his first coaching job at Valdosta State. Yes, sir. Hogo was the only coach to have the title of OC under Leach. That was in 2007 at Texas Tech. This is awesome. I know. I like, know. I this can't. is a matchup that has been 25 years in the making. That's right. That's right. And so it's just it when and Holgerson just got here five minutes ago. Well, Holgerson got the West Virginia job the year after Texas Tech ran Leach off. That's right. So he never got to face him. Yes. In conference, but this is. Gonna I don't be even fun. know that 
When that happened, I don't think West Virginia was in the Big 12 yet. I may, no, they weren't. It was like 2012. Yeah, that think, happened, that some happened time later. way before it, the, the, the realignment. Either way, um, yeah, that's – no, no, no. I th- did Holgerson get the job in like 08? No, he went to Oklahoma State. Yeah. Uh, and then went to West Virginia West after Virginia. that. But either way, this is going to be an awesome matchup. You know these dudes are going to pull some tricks out. All, all I want to do is just sit in a room and hang out with these guys and drink beer. And oh, listen to them Lord, talk. yes. Like, I don't want to say anything. I just want to listen and, and hang out. It's, well, I would I would try and toss some things out there to get conversation stirred up. No, I don't. You don't. You don't need to with Leach. Well, no, but you the, don't. Anytime you see one of Leach's press conferences, it's always like people start him off. Hey, what do you think about Bigfoot? Actually, let me tell you a story. Right, and then it goes into all this other stuff. Right, people ask him these weird questions, and they've started doing it because they know that he'll talk about it. Other coaches will just look at you like you're insane. I know. He's, Leach is awesome. He's so Holgerson, good. however, uh, yeah, that is a Red Bull and vodka drinking fool. I mean, we're talking about going to the casinos. We're talking, and he has got the most fun hair of any college football coach out there. Skull aside. From maybe maybe Gundy. No, a skull, but I still think it's better. Skillet's better than a mullet. No, I think yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, move on, next one. Let's see, USC minus four and a half at BYU. Lin Swan out as the AD at USC. Quit. Does it, it resigned right? Yeah. And then walk up. Y'all are y'all are looking for my replacement, and I'm still right here. Exactly. I'm still here. Um, this is the first game without. The AD. What do you think about USC right now? Look, Slovis looks phenomenal. Their freshman quarterback. BYU can outpower USC. I think they're I think they're better in the trenches, probably. BYU 0-4 in their last four as a home underdog. I USC, if they win this game, they are sitting at 3-0. I think they're back in the rankings. I think that they've got a chance because Washington doesn't really scare you right now. Uh, Notre Dame looked eh their first two weeks. You know, what do we what do we make of this? I mean, I like USC. I don't know that an athletic director affects a head coach. No, no, no or I don't think that matters at all. Team at all. So I think the Lin Swan thing is just crappy of the people that run the school, and which we kind of know that for a while. But well, yeah, they're, they're not a very well ran organization. Um, they should have no, done this back in the summer. Really, you fire the guy before you. Hire his replacement. That's that's just a little comic. Or before you start looking for the replacement. Well, yes. That's, I mean, just yeah. it, if you knew that he wasn't going to be the guy, you got. You can't call and interview four or five people, and <laughs> and then say, "Did you just interview this guy? These guys all talk. They know each yeah, other. They they know what's up. And then nobody wants to take that job because you're doing that to your current AD. Why would I come take that job? Exactly. You're gonna treat me this crappy. Um. I don't know. I, I, I'm with you. I think USC is better than we thought before the yeah. season started. And, and they're playing well. BYU, I mean, I'd like to give them a shot here. That's and, a tough physical football team. And, but, it, I mean, A, I get points taking USC. No, USC's favorite. Oh, that's right. Yeah, USC minus four and a half. So uh, it's down to seven. four? Down to four right now. Man, I may jump all over that one here a little bit. Hang on. You That's it. You're going to check out the Vegas Insider yeah. thing? That's a, we, we were supposed to roll through these quick. And, no, we, but, no, I told you we got to do less games because nothing is quick. They they may have this as uh, do BYU. Dead air, baby. There we go. Southern Dead Cal. Dead air. It's still four, four and a half. And 96. 96% of the people are on SoCal. I am not jumping on, on USC at all. Give it BYU. You rolling BYU on that one, all right? You just uh, need to win the game. Next game up, TCU minus two and a half at Purdue. Purdue quarterback Elijah Sindelar day to day with a concussion after last week. Uh, this will tell us a lot about these two teams, right? That's right. Was the loss to Nevada just an anomaly, or is Purdue actually in real trouble this year? TCU is this one of those bounce back seasons after they go, you know, seven and six, whatever, where they turn a switch, and they're at 10 wins, 11 wins. I could not like two coaches better at kind of like the same tier program yeah. in their perspective conference. At, which are both specialties at, at 
two different things. Yes. Right? Oh yeah. That's Braun couldn't, is all they offensive. They could be more different. Yeah. It's it's strange. Uh, but Patterson against Jeff Brom. I, I, Gary Patterson's a man after my own heart. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to lean on this one. Now, luckily, we're not doing picks on these interesting matchups. Oh, we're not. No. No. We're we we only do the. We're just the five. talking about them. If you want to go see our picks for the big games, our five big games each week, you go over to the website, go over to the gambling picks section, and they're right there. It's the if you're listening to us games. ramble about these interesting games, I'd take TCU. Yeah. I think I'd probably do the same. But, man, Brom as a home underdog, like really good. I'm literally just betting Gary Patterson, and that's it. That's that's probably smart idea. But, then, I mean, look, listen, I love both these guys. Yeah, so. you're right. You're right. Alabama, minus 25 at South Carolina. 2010, last time Alabama was in Columbia, Steve Spurrier's Gamecocks whooped that rear end, 35-21. to 21. As Nick Saban said this week, they whipped the lining out of our pants. Like, they got their brains beat in that day. Steven Garcia had the greatest individual quarterback performance I have ever seen against an Alabama defense. It was, he couldn't miss. He was firing on all cylinders, and he had been out drinking the night before. And I think I heard a story about that, which does that surprise you at all about Steven Garcia? No. Freshman quarterback Ryan Helinski, 24 out of 30, 282 yards, two touchdowns, one pick, one rushing touchdown last week in a 72 to 10 thrashing of Charleston Southern. Still a freshman quarterback going up against Nick Saban. Is there any chance that any kind of magic will pops must up? Not Steve Spurrier. I think that's may, that may be all you need to say about that one, right? All right, moving on. Next one: Florida State at Virginia. Virginia minus seven and a half. Now the reason that I've got this on here. Florida State gave up a 21 to three lead in the first half to Boise. They gave up a 21 to nothing lead to ULM. Still got the win, 45 to 44, but it was in overtime and it would have gone to double overtime had ULM not missed an extra point. Florida State two seven and one against the spread on the road in their last ten. Virginia five and two at, at uh, against the spread in the last two seasons at home. I mean, what do you think? What? It, it, Virginia can win this game and maybe dominate their division for the rest of the uh, the season here. I think Florida State's a terrible football team, and I don't know why we're talking about them in the big games. I think this is more about Bronco Mendenhall. Okay. I love Bronco Mendenhall, and I think what Virginia's doing is really, really special, and he's turning that program around. Florida is, State's a dumpster fire. This is a team that barely beat Louisiana. No, you're right. Well, Louisiana Monroe. Monroe. Which oh, is, it's even worse. That's even worse. That's even worse. Yeah. Made, you, didn't, you didn't help the calls. Two more. Kansas State at Mississippi State. State a minus seven and a half point favorite. Tommy Stevens, day-to-day Mississippi State quarterback. Kansas State, number eight most efficient team in the country. Man. Number 10 on defense, number six we, on offense. We might have been bigly wrong about Kansas State preseason. Now, they have played nobody yeah, in the first two the games. Yeah, they crap out of those nobody teams. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of... I didn't think they'd score all those points... The whole year. It's amazing to me that Wisconsin has gotten so much hype for, for you know, they're super efficient. They're the number one most efficient, right? But South Florida is a little bit different than some of these other teams. Now, South Florida, are they? Be, yes, they are. South Florida beats these teams by two scores every day. Not State and Kansas State. The people Kansas State has played. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. And the people that Mississippi State has played. South Florida beats all those teams by two scores. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we may have been way wrong on Kansas State. We if, may have been. If they come in to Starkville oh, and, they, and If they put walk it on, out with a W, we, we were dead wrong. Dead wrong. No, no, not, not maybe wrong. We well, wrong. I, I had them three and nine. Yeah. Um, they would already have three wins if they beat Mississippi State this weekend. And it's not out of the realm of possibility. Like, oh, I know no. they're the underdogs here, but, whew, boy. All right, last one up. Closing out, Florida at Kentucky. Kentucky, a seven and a half point underdog at home. Terry Wilson, quarterback, out for the season. Uh, look, I, I like the uh, I like the new quarterback, mm-hmm. kid from uh, from Troy that came in as a grad transfer. I was about to say grad transfer. He's older. He's got some experience. Sawyer, what is it? Sawyer Smith? I think that's right. Yeah, um, probably. So it's Sawyer something. Yeah, I, I 
didn't write it down, totally should have. Good country boy name. But either way, I know his name's Sawyer, and that's a pretty good name. And that makes me think that Kentucky's got a shot here. I think he is a better passer than Terry Wilson was. I I don't know. Kentucky's still got a good defense. I, was I, I think I think Mark Rick has, I mean, oh, God, Mark. Mark Stoops? Mark Stoops. Jesus, all these old <laughs> We struggling at the end of this. All these old coaching <laughs> names are just running together. Um, Mark Stoops has been recruiting. He's built this team up, and and they are they are not the Kentucky that we grew up with. They are better than that, and they have a culture now. I mean, I I kind of like Kentucky. I mean, firmly planted in that third spot. I know we're only two weeks in behind Georgia and Florida, and in, in the SEC East. And they got Florida at home here. They get them at home. It's it's more than a touchdown. I like Kentucky. I like Mark Stoops. I, I mean, I'm with you. If, if we were picking this one, I would take Kentucky plus seven and a half here. I mean, I, I don't like what Florida has done so far. And I could see Felipe Franks making some big-time errors in this game. Uh, he made mistakes last year against Kentucky, cost them the game in the swamp. Look, this ain't the same Kentucky team no, as it's last not the year. Same, but the, but, but they're, the they're culture, a good team, though. they have built a culture. That's right. And they are, they are really, really good. Really good. All right. That is going to wrap up this week's college football big game previews. Uh, we will go check out the gambling picks. We get, we're going to talk more college football about that. Uh, we're also doing NFL, et cetera. We'll have TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast on with us. Go check it out. We'll see you guys then. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.